Beef, good to be joining me. How you doing, Beef? Motion. I oh, Bricky, okay, I'm I'm doing pretty good. I uh, I had to look pretty glamorous there on the podcast, but now that we're off camera, I got to put my S2 beanie back on and nice. just got in my snuggie so I can keep nice and warm here doing the cast. And I'm looking forward to it, man. It's going to be a hot match. It is. You know, here we are. Obviously, it's a rematch of cycle number three, um, except uh, opposite side of the spectrum. You know, we got the chance to talk with both Hanskin and Swinnow Melons on the podcast before this matchup. And uh, it's expected, you know, both teams feeling pretty good. I, I thought it was interesting, though, what Swinnow Melons was saying, how it's almost as if they're, they're going to matches, uh, almost kind of, a, or he does, go, expecting to lose. But, you know, in the end, they win. I mean, I don't know how much seriousness there was to that. But um, these guys are winning. I mean, they, they do nothing but win in the end. And again, now they have that one nothing advantage, unlike being down 0-1, even 0-2 last cycle. So that, they, they got to be feeling at least a lot better about that when it comes down to it, I'm sure. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to go in with confidence when you got that one game advantage. You talked about the momentum that you can get from that as well. But and it looks like with the draft starting right here, SG's looking to capitalize on that momentum with a relatively aggressive couple of picks coming out right away. They're like, uh, we're not going for any hard carries or anything just yet. We're going to get our strong gankers out of the way nice and early with a Pebbles Lodestone. Yeah, uh, might as well get that out of the way. I mean, obviously two very strong heroes for them, especially in just hell any team. Uh, so I'm sure they're happy with that start. You know, it, I do want to make a mention of the bands, though, the Scout Engineer Devourer Prisoner. So uh, that was interesting. You know, they, they basically put it on being on the Legion side here. Tempest. That does give them more control in that sense. Uh, they banned Devourer saying, if you want to leave Prisoner open, we'll gladly take it ourselves. So obviously a lot of esports club, you know, felt obligated and for good reason. They're going to go ahead and ban that prisoner. But holy crap, these teams flying along here. We already have the first three heroes down on either side. Stay Green finishes with the Tempest pick. You have Lions going Wretched Hag, Ophelia, and Glacius to finish things off. So getting their getting their support out of the way in that Glacius. But uh, going the Glacius support in general, seems like Glacius as a hero has died off to an extent uh, as being that, that go-to support every single game at least. Still a very powerful support. Um, but uh, is going to be picked up here by Lions, so with that third pick. Yeah, it's definitely one that Seal Kid's comfortable. I mean, the you, know, you shall not pass ultimates coming out from him are a pretty common thing, and then maybe even making sure to pick that up, uh, making sure that SG wouldn't be able to get it. We always talk about being a little bit of a counter to Ophelia, but more so than that, I think they're just comfortable using it right here, because otherwise yeah. they would have banned it out in the second banning phase, and uh, well, We'll go ahead and see. He's also one of these heroes that can roam relatively effectively early on with the double nuke spells and try to put some pressure onto Tempest, which kind of leads me to believe that they might do something like an aggressive pseudo tri-lane here. Already they have a wretched hang that could hold it down in the middle or in the uh, short lane. And then Glacius Ophelia, you throw in your strength stunner with that, and then you grab another one of your solos, and yeah. you got a making sort of a lion aggressive pseudo tri-lane. Yeah, you know, with that, uh, I don't even think, we, I don't know if we touched on this just yet, but by the way, once again, this is a best out of five here, guys. As you see on your screen, stay green. They are up one game to nothing, of course, coming from the winner's bracket. So, uh, Lion Esports Club will need to win three games. Stay green, just two games here. And deservingly so, again, coming from the winner's bracket, which they defeated Lions to even get to this point. That's another thing maybe we forgot to mention. Uh, we talked about the rematch last cycle, but they even played this cycle in the winner bracket finals. And obviously, Stay Green took out Lions two games to nothing. Uh, they've only lost one game this cycle, <laughs> as we're talking about the podcast. And sure enough, that was to Happy Five Friends in the first round. So uh, clearly, they're, 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 you can, they're kind of back on that track like they were for cycle one and two, uh, moving along here. So no doubt Lions, you know, has that in the back of their mind, I'm sure. But hey, one game at a time. We always... We always talk about complexity, uh, uh, X complexity, Team USA and Lions and their history. But I mean, Lions have just been s around for so long. They've been so consistent. They have history with everybody. Like you were mentioning those yeah. recent matches. And then, I mean, even in the uh, Hauntu or Grand Finals, they played there on day one. Sound Blaster Heroes League semifinals. Lions got some revenge there, knocking down Stay Green. It's There's a lot of history between these two teams. And they're looking to try to even up the score once more right here. Lions, if they were to end yet another Stay Green streak right now, I mean, that would that'd be gigantic. We could call them the Stay Green Killers. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's, if if is a big word, though. I mean, the fact that they're up 2-0 yeah. last cycle in the Grand Finals, <laughs> and then they lost it three games to two, it's, it's a big if for me. But holy crap, hold oh, your horses. Yeah. Wow. 
Ravener just picked up by Lion Esports Club. You know, Ravener's, I will say this, and may maybe I say it a lot when <laughs> a new hero's picked up, but I think he's kind of underrated. Uh, he did also get some pretty decent buff in a fairly recent patch, I believe it was. <laughs> I think I want to say to his ultimate even, so this yeah, guy's a lot of magic turned his ult, turned his ult like, into a Harkins blade, I'm pretty sure. Like, yeah. Something along those lines. So it's definitely strong, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it in this game. Now, with that being said, this is going to be kind of their their farmer in that long lane, most likely with Glacius, and then they'll finish it off right here, maybe with another solo. I mean, it, it's possible that they could just kind of go back and put Wretched Hag in the suicide position and then Ravener in the short lane, Glacius with a stunner in the middle lane. Yeah. We'll have to see what they... They have some serious options here, but they also need to consider that with Tempest and Torture already being on the same team, along with the Pebbles, SG has a pretty good sieging lineup, and they're highlighting that Warbeast, who is unbanned, and this would be a fantastic addition, but it would make their lanes kind of weird. It would have to be a... Uh, suicide mid lodestone probably well you know i'm sure they're looking at that ravener pick as well and kind of goes okay it is going to be the warby's final pick but you know where are they going to play it is the question i don't know if they've happened to catch a scrim where lions was testing out this ravener or maybe so they have that exact information it wouldn't surprise me some of them especially you know does plenty of research but you you brought out the point that we could be seeing some kind of an aggressive pseudo trial lane so you know keeping that in mind how are we going to adjust that maybe you want to run that short lane lodestone something like the uh the the middle war beast even then have an aggressive mm -hmm. trial lane yourself with that pebbles torture and tempest in the other jungle so uh it's going to be interesting to see you know what they expect at alliance and how they're going to adjust as a result of that so i uh, but yeah, the fact that they got Warbies to the final pick. I mean, we see Warbies banned nowadays in the first two bans oh, yeah. uh, in many games. So the fact you can pick up Warbies with their final pick, I think they're ultimately pretty happy uh, when it comes down to that. But speaking of the final pick for Lions now, I mean, again, I assume Ravener is going to be ran as more that that mid style, uh, that mid beefy presence, you know, something like a Glacius Ravener lane. So w with that keeping in mind, you know, they probably need a suicide hero unless they again they are planning to run a pseudo trial lane, but. Uh, you know, Ayn on the board, I mean, who is there? You got yeah, Bubbles I mean, still. Bubbles is kind of my thought here. If they were going to run the dual solos and the aggressive pseudo tri lane. the problem with that is because there's already the lodestone there and because you can then uh, put Pebbles Torture yes, in the middle yeah. lane. Huh. Okay. Um, that's really interesting. And I'm trying to figure out now what they're actually going to do with this. I think they're going to put the shul, uh, Wretched Hag solo. They're going to put Jeraziah in the middle, and they're going to run that aggressive pseudo trilate here. Um, yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. Jonas, generally their suicide player, uh, putting him into a suicide mid position, probably going to be going up against Pebbles Torture. I, they shouldn't really be able to kill this Jeraziah, and he doesn't have to worry uh, too much about the Tempest because they're going to have voids on that bottom river. I think that Lions has actually got a very interesting shot. I'm not going to say they have a good shot <laughs> in this early game, but the stay green team, very conventional. Lions going yeah. very outside of the box. Well, we'll see if it pays off. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Lions, they're, they're no one for doing this. I mean, this is not unordinary by any means as far as, you know, Super KG especially just as a player. I mean, obviously the Devourer that, he, that he's known for playing, but, you know, he'll play the different kind of hero every now and then. Obviously he's doing that here with the Ravener, so – uh, excited to see, but yeah, the laning phase again. I, we're gonna have a lot of questions answered here shortly, I'm sure. But not only is how is Lions gonna do it, but how will Stay Green adjust? Will they just call from the beginning? As far as what we're seeing here, right off the bat, we got all five going to the same jungle in that Legion jungle. So you see, Warbeast Chessy sending out the one Hellhound right here. Gonna get that uh, early information of where the Hellborn team is at. But Lions actually dodges the Hellhound. Kind of wonder if this could catch them off guard. So, but they are spotted now. And it looks like Stay Green is going to play passive enough, so. Not going to be catching them here, or are they? I mean. Ooh. The Legion team is set up, and the Hellborn team with no scouting information has to be really careful right now. There's Wretched Hang in the front lines with the blink, and here they go. There's the rocket troll. Misses Glacius, but it doesn't matter. Slime is coming out. There's the Protector Charm, but it's already with the magic abilities being used. He goes down immediately, and now Ravenor being chased back. Will they be able to block him? The ball lightning. He stuns back in, hoping that that's going to value enough time right here. He's still trying to do He tries to do the chain reactions. Does miss it, though, and Ravenor goes down as well. Not the start Lions was looking for. Oh, man, that's big. I mean, the protective oh, charm, not. it's, you know, but again, it's the, by the time he used it, the, the stuns and magic abilities were obviously used, so that hurt. 
Yeah, it certainly does. And you got to look at who got the money right there. And Chessie, with the bloodlust, he brings out a ring of the teacher immediately Jeez, yeah. for war beast i mean that's going to give the armor the mana region and the damage that's going to make his time in this bottom lane a lot easier and they do opt now to send jeraziah into the suicide lane here against the war beast i mean this should be a relatively even match pebbles taking some damage in the middle lane though he is trying to live right here it's very close glacier's chasing with auto attacks one more not going to be enough though they'll just be out of kill range thank god he had that shield of course uh, not that that's a surprise by any means, but the shield coming into play right there for Swindlemelons to keep him alive. But uh, yeah, obviously Z Freak was a little bit late getting there. I believe he was still placing some ward aside, so uh, hence the reason. But this is also an interesting lane, mainly because, again, I'm sure they're not used to playing against a Ravener. So it's like, how do you play against a Ravener here? Uh, so you got to keep in mind with that ball lightning. If it hits, obviously he can port and stun you to follow it up. So we'll see. It's, uh, I'm sure that may come into play here, but... Yeah, I, I'm not sure if Swindle has seen this in the middle lane before. I certainly know that this is my first time seeing a Ravener in the middle lane. One of the reasons I was kind of expecting him in one of the off lanes here. But going to be going up against the Pebbles Torture. And I've talked with a lot of people. Torture is not considered to be one of the best middle lanes. You want that Pyromancer. You want that Engineer. Torture, with a lot of his damage coming from the Impalement, it's very rare that you're going to be able to get a good amount of damage off of that yeah. without the other team grossly overplaying. So I would already say that Lions perhaps has a, a decent time here, and especially because Pebbles didn't get uh, credit for one of those kills. He got an assist, but that's like 30 gold. Not the biggest of deals. So his bottle is still going to be at a normal timing as it starts to fly out right now. Yeah. Uh, this Jerezaya, too, it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, this matchup is not necessarily the worst for him by any means. Being in that suicide role, uh, sure, pretty happy in the end, the fact that uh, maybe he's even going up against this. But uh, Jerezaya, we even talked about him yesterday. He's been right-clicked, I think, and obviously wasn't picked up in the end. But he, th this hero seems like he, he has its phases. Like, he'll be picked up one day, he'll dominate with the team, and then the next day he just he might be banned a couple times randomly, and then he just won't be seen again. So it seems like he really mm -hmm. just kind of comes in and dies right out. Middle lane, though, Pebbles in some trouble. Ball lightning used there. Support. The freeze already coming out, though. Not enough mana uh, for much else. Will it be enough? No, it won't. The final auto attack does not get the kill. Swinamount's using those trees to hide. And it does keep him alive. So they're clearly playing this pretty damn aggressive. But Swindamelon's able to survive. He has to go back to base, though. So at least they get something out of it. Yeah, they need to be playing this aggressive within reason because Lions are actually in a very bad position right now. They've kind of gone for these lanes. And I think they were thinking about the aggressive pseudo there, hoping to get some more aggression going on. But Hanskin has had some bad spawns in the jungle. Top lane, I mean, Wretched Hag versus Lodestone, not exactly a matchup that's going to be in Hag's favor when Lodestone is getting a stacked regen plus an early kill. So he got a fast bottle. I, they're losing all of their lanes right now, and there's not really any hope for them to actually get back into these lanes. They're going to need to group up and put some aggression on, hope to get those kills, and so that's why they're playing so aggressive. They know they need these kills. Yeah. It, it, obviously, you look back at the way the game started. I mean, in that jungle, not only the bloodlust, but the second kill to follow it up. You know, as you're talking about the early bottle as a result of that on Lodestone, the ring of the teacher right away on Warbeast. I mean, of course, on the laning phase, it just enhances you that much more. So, yeah, this middle matchup, very important for Lion Esports Club, but it does seem like uh, Ravener is having a difficult time of, of winning that matchup with the Grief Farm. And, again, they're, they're continuing. They try to play aggressive. They got two times now where getting very close to kills on Pebbles, but just not able to do so. And, you know, I hate to say it for their, for their sake, but you, you got to get those kills because – as this game progresses on, the laning phase is going to work much more in favor of the state green, it seems like. But that does go back to Hanskin. You mentioned it might not be the most favorable spawns for him, but, you know, get him to start picking things up. Maybe get that Skelta King started roam in the middle. There is no war to sight. There is no vision by state green on the top side of the map, really. So maybe that's where Ophelia can kind of try to sneak in right here and set up that kill that we see so often. But uh, obviously easier said than done, especially if you're not getting the best of spawns. He does have a Minotaur, but I'm sure he wants a Skelter King, which he has over here now. So yeah, Let's see if he gets it, that. It's actually really interesting, the warding that went on from Stay Green. You mentioned that there's not one on the river. And the reason for that is, is because there's one in the bottom lane, actually. Um, Z Freak placing one there, and that indicated that he was either planning on harassing somebody out with torture in the bottom lane, or they thought there was going to be an aggressive lane down there. Yeah. In the end, it ends up being Jerezai, so State Green kind of 
not anticipating that one perfectly does leave them vulnerable but Hanskin assumes that they're not vulnerable assumes that there's a ward there and so he's playing very cautious when it comes to trying to set up those ganks as he once again returns back to the jungle yeah again he, he takes over that skeleton king we'll see maybe when he finishes this off he is heading no nope, he's just gonna go uh, continue to farm it looks like so yeah as you put it's maybe it's just that scare of knowing or figuring that they have a ward doesn't want to waste time or no just not feeling comfortable with the opportunity but uh, in the end, no gank's going to be coming out just yet from Hanskin. He wants to try to enhance that farm. Speaking of farm in the jungle, my nuts on Tempest. It, it's doing what he does best. I mean, look at this. 390 gold per minute. Again, he has the two assists. No doubt that helped, as we kept talking about. But, man, he is having a very good time. Top lane, Wretched Egg almost fallen. Now they're going for the counter kill. Here comes Ophelia. He has his armor back up. Will it be enough to left? Great hero blocking initially with the creeps. The auto attack's coming out. Can he survive this? The plate's coming into play. Will it be enough first in the end? Yes, it will. Barely, but they get it as Fuzi gets credit. Yeah, just really well played by Fuzi. Made sure to live through the initial Shatterstorm combo there from Lodestone. And then Ophelia, right place, right time. Hanskin's finally able to connect with one of those ganks. I'd like to see him try to make his way toward the middle lane now. But unfortunately, ends don't have any vision there. So they, once again, aren't sure if there's wards. And you really have to moderate the amount of time you're spending ganking there. Yeah. As opposed to what you're doing farming. Because you already talked about how good Tempest is. But middle lane, once more. Yeah, but here we go. Ravener points in with the ball lightning. Here comes Jerry with a protective charm. Sets up the kill on a Pebbles. He's now chasing torture. Remember, the Impalma's still doing damage. It is physical, but they don't care. They're going to continue to dive. Ball lightning up in three seconds. Jerry chasing the aura, slowing down torture a little bit right here. Nice juke in the tree, though, from Z Freak. He eats right through the ball like it. It is going to connect, though. In comes Ravener with the storm Ooh. plates, and down goes torture. Yeah, you see some good burst potential there from Ravener, and that's only with that level one ultimate and uh, not really maxing out the abilities just yet. However, he's in trouble now. As they're going to chase Glacius slow, it looks like they're going to They are now. going to try to, and oh, ultimate almost going off right there. Hag is in position for a big bat blast, and she's going to try to set it up right now, Breaky. There we go. It hits all of them right there. Tempest ultimate, though. Who's going to come out on top right here? Ravener will fall, but down goes Tempest. Warby's in that metamorphosis. Will it be enough to get away? Yes, it will. Lowstone, he has a shadow storm. He's looking to make a big play right here. He's looking to survive, if anything. It goes off, but the sonar scream right after he goes down. Pebbles takes out Glacius, and now Pebbles locked down. Oh, this fight's just so chaotic right here. Who's going to come out on top of the end? The chase is now in favor of lines, it looks like. Pebbles, the bottle charge is barely enough. They didn't finish him. Bottle charges from Swinomel. Soul's Blessing going to come out right here. It does not stop stuns, but it will help set up a kill. On a torture. I think Wretched Act misplayed big time there. Can they still finish off Pebbles? Sonar Scream, maybe? No, he's not going to Sonar Scream. It's Twin of Melons will make the escape. Wow. Unbelievable. Crazy yeah, fight. A little bit of a bit of a misplay there on Wretched Hang. They should have been able to pick up a very important kill on the Pebbles. In the end, they almost get Pebbles, but congratulations to Swindle Mons. I mean, just big. Big plays coming out right there. Congratulations, not the right term, but uh, <laughs> big plays coming out with the Juke surviving in that situation. But here's the situation now. The resource lead is very even after a really tumultuous start, and Lions did exactly what they needed to do. They knew that when they hit level 6, they have a small timing window. They hit that timing window, and they hit it hard to get themselves back into this game, but now they need to keep the pressure up. They cannot allow this team to farm. Oh, yeah. You know, going back to the last fight real quickly, too, the reason why I said Hack definitely might have made a mistake Right there was because I believe he thought uh, Pebbles was just going to take down to the haunt, if anything, maybe be finished with that last auto attack. But he switched his target to torture, I'm pretty sure, on mm -hmm. purpose right there. But he still could have just stuck on Pebbles to finish him off. So, yeah, definitely a misplay. Here we go. Those of Pebbles are going to be gone. And once again, Protective Charm comes in, helping out Ravener right here to uh, get away from the chain reaction. But look at Swinomon. The bottle charge is again coming through the heal, though, from Jerusiah as soon as the charm wears off to get the kill. Now, Torture trying to live. The freeze comes out. He will fall. Chess or Limp, excuse me. He ports in. He's looking for a chance with this rocket drill, but he misses it, it looks like. And so he's going to have to fall back. So good gank, the aggressive play, as you're just talking about keeping up here, it looks like, from Lions. Yeah, they're just going to have to keep that up, but they also have to worry about this push. You got the War Beast, Tempest, and Torture combination already tower going down up top, but they trade, doing what they need to do in that respect. Yeah. I think that Lions, I mean, they're feeling comfortable with this. They do something that we talk about sometimes in other esports like StarCraft, where you go for a strategy that might not be optimal, but you're putting the other team into a position where they're not quite sure what to do, and you're just a little bit more comfortable there. And Lions, clearly a little bit more comfortable with where they're at in this game. They're executing pretty damn good in the last couple of minutes, and we'll see if they can keep that up. Yeah, you know, so as, okay, so as this game, a little bit of an old face here after those tower kills. 
I'm trying to analyze this Jirazai, the potential of that he's going to have in this game. I mean, still, Jirazai just with that soul's blessing and the charm, great. I'm thinking of his protective charm, though. This game is not going to be as useful as in other games would be. Uh, Wretched Heck, by the way, going at it with Pebbles, he takes the Invis rune right in front of him, and he runs away with it. So uh, Wretched Egg not able to do much right there else. Um, but m point being, I mean, you look at the Legion side. You got Low Stone. He's a lot of mixed damage. So Shiro may mitigate a little bit, but in the end, he's still going to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Torch, obviously, with the Impalement. Uh, you got you got the Tempest Ultimate. He could care less about a Protective Charm. And then you got War Beast. You know, he doesn't even care about it at all. He's just going right through it with all the physical presence. So I wonder if I that's... Think the Okay. biggest part about the protective charm here is the fact that they have it early it acts the same way that a shrunken head would but they have it right now and you can see that he's already got two points in it i expect him to throw at least one more point in that and to be using it on ravener constantly in these team fights mostly for that pebbles stun the yeah. lodestone stun as well but it's going to allow ravener to actually get in there and this is what's going to enable lions to keep the pressure up if they did not have this uh jerry protective charm Going in and initiating onto Pebbles the way that Rally, uh, Ravener has been doing would be suicide. Yeah. And Warbeast in trouble. Oh, the ball lightning will miss right Oof. there. If that connected, that's an easy kill. But Metamorphosis came out, and he barely reacted in time uh, to get away. So, yeah, very, very close. Using the Bat Blast even. He is only level 9, so only the level 1 Bat Blast. But, again, Warby survives. He goes back to base, and look at what he picks up. The Abyssal Skull is now finished with the Steam Boots, and he has a Mystic Vestments thrown on there as uh, obviously an important pickup as well so good for him here comes the middle push though from uh from line esports club we'll see what they make happen here you got ravener in those front lines jerazai is not with them he's still pushing the bottom lane this should be a free tower kill though yeah easy tower kill for line esports club so they have an 1800 goalie the experience is nearly identical but a slight lead for Lions in that perspective. And, you know, Wretched Dag's another, you can't forget about him, her too, when you got a, that Jerezai combination. I mean, we've seen past strategies. Uh, where there was a famous, uh, I believe it was Fave E game where, back for Empire, where he actually went Wretched Dag with a Jerezai teammate. He actually got two oh, yeah. bottles on Wretched Dag, and he also got a Null Stone. You know, that combination with the Protector Charm, it's actually pretty damn powerful for moving around in those fights. So, uh, but again, this game, maybe not as big, but still, it has a point to it. And yeah, Congor kind of being attempted right here. Yeah, ball lightning going out from Ravener right there, just trying to get a little bit of vision, but I mean, not going to actually connect with anything right there. How much vision does it do? 500 clear vision, so that's kind of a nice tool, but yeah. in the end, not really much coming out of that. And I mean, that's another thing about the chairs. And I, you talked about Fae V with the double bottles and I mean, memories right there. I remember exactly where I was when I was watching that game. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but uh, I mean, the Null Stone combination as well. It's definitely something that is strong and needs to be considered. But the Legion team, they're spending a lot of time right now just trying to mess around with Concord and make sure that they do not allow this one to go out for free. Uh, but it looks like both teams are going to just go back to a little bit of farming, although the Hellborn have not given up on this completely. Yeah, they're, they're kind of trying to take away resources from Stay Green by forcing them to kind of defend right here, but now they're going to go back in. And, and yeah, to be clear, I mean, the Null Stone this game, I don't see that happening. I think it'd be actually pretty damn useless this game. It's, again, the charm's not really the, as big as it is in other games, so. Uh, but, uh, yeah, definitely just relating it to the history. But here we go, initiation. Wretched plinks in. There's that protective charm. The ball lightning will connect on the Pebbles, and they burst it down. But here comes the Tampa's ultimate. It catches the Skeleton Kings. That's going to be a full duration. It's on Soul's Blessing, though, and a big turnaround for Lion Esports Club. That is the power of Jerezai right there. Soul's Blessing comes out, saves them all just what by a big Warby's Tempest doing? ultimate. And, yeah, Warby is getting a little too friendly right there going back in. Yeah. He needs to be careful. Where's off right there? Tempest going to drop a Glacial Blast. And unfortunately, they're not going to be able to actually capitalize and get either of those kills, but they will be able to go back into the Congor pit. And that just ended up being beautiful initiation. Everything set up there by the Lions to hit that kill onto Pebbles was gorgeous. And despite the big Elemental Void grabbing two plus the Ophelia minions, yeah. and Soul's Blessing is... <laughs> it's hella powerful, man. Oh, yeah. That is a it's strong spell. For how that This is my point with Jerezaiah. Exactly this. I mean, he pops up randomly, and it's like, holy shit, he has this ability that does that. And it's like, why is he not picked up more on the scene? But then shortly after, you know, he just fades back out. So it, it yeah. really does kind of mind-boggling that it, that seems to be kind of just a rinse and repeat. But who knows? Who knows? But, yeah, right there, exactly. That's one of the most powerful abilities in the game, I think you could say. As far as turning around well, team fights, especially, especially in concert with Ophelia Ultimate and Astrolabe, yeah, like it, it's like 
700 heal on everybody plus immunity to physical for like five seconds i don't know man yeah. it's it's pretty insane in either case stay green now on their back heels and they've got to be in a really uncomfortable spot in the bottom lane wretched hag is manning up on the load so this might actually be a kill breaky if he's level 11 maybe but he is level 10 still so no level 2 bat blast and it's even on cooldown anyways for 30 seconds so yeah just applying some pressure right there uh, forcing him out of the lane, getting some farm. You know, I was obviously curious, I'm sure everyone is, what what build would we see on Super KGE specifically with that Ravenor? We got our first answer, going the Ice Brand here as far as this first item. So now it's kind of like an anti-kite tool, kind of bulking himself up. I expect that to turn into a full-on Dawnbringer. He seems like a hero that could definitely benefit from that as well. Um, so I Tempest in trouble down here. Yeah, Tempest actually yeah. freeze coming out. Jerizai is sitting on top of the auto attacks. Now he charmed himself so he can't heal bomb himself. But in comes Ratchet. Oh, not close yeah. enough, though, with the heal. Doesn't matter. They do clean up. Yep. Good pickings right there. Lodestone, Lodestone spotted them, two of them, coming into the jungle right there. So I'm a little bit concerned about what Tempest was actually doing. Um... He probably should have been falling back there. They're going to convert this into at least one tower. Top river, though, Ravener's going hard. Yeah, Ravener trying to chase down Lowstone, but seeing the support coming in, not going to chase further. In fact, now he is on the run. He still doesn't have that ice round, by the way. He purchased it about a minute ago. Uh, so the courier just must be uh, continuing to be in use. But he is going to run back. Bottom tower, tower killed in the meantime. So, if anything, a good distraction right there. And now uh, Wretched Hat going to port top. And she's going to continue to pick up farm up here. Warbeast is here. We'll see if they find an opportunity. Ball Lightning, just going to scout with it. Oh, but Wretched Egg actually oh, blinks it. Very did. aggressive. Yeah, going right there to Warby's Ravener now. He's being locked down completely. He is going to fall. They say, Jerizaya, where is he now? As they take him out, but here comes the response. Lodestone in trouble. The auto attacks he's trying to port out. Not going to be in time. And now Pebbles trying to run Can't away. The wolves this. are after him. <laughs> Why are the wolves after him right here? Uh, they're going to end up falling back. But no, the freeze comes out, and Pebbles is now in a lot of trouble. He tried to TP out. So the melons, he's going to end up falling right here. Oh, my God. He's going to get a counter kill? No. <laughs> no. Almost. There was a token there as well. So in the end, they trade, uh, I believe, two for Ravener as what the hell is Ophelia doing bottom? Uh, he was chasing Warbies. He got really tunnel vision, though. And yeah, <laughs> yeah that he did. Going to lose all of his minions right here as well. I mean, that's uh, Hanskin. I know you're in the lead right now. I know you got momentum and you're probably feeling really good, but you got to make sure not to lose sight, and giving up kills like that is a really big deal because now you're going to have to get all those minions back. They're going to have momentum down here. They're not going to fear for any of their towers. They're not going to fear yeah. that you're doing double or triple stacked ancients. And, yeah, you probably just don't want to do that. Back to Ravener, though. You're talking about the items that he's going to go for. He will go for a frozen light right here. Uh, that is going to be the first item as Hag is going on to Warbeast in the bottom lane and Warbeast not choosing to use the metamorphosis. It's on cooldown for another second, but Wretched Hag might blink and Sonar Scream. One more auto, and he does. Going to turn this around on the Tempest as well. They're going hard, Breaky. Tempest has an element of void, though. They need to be careful not to both get caught. You see them playing very passive. They're continuing to kite them, though. Tempest, there's the ultimate. It misses Ravener, though. It only locks on Hag. Here comes Lowstone. Nice freeze on a Lowstone, though. That was a better choice, definitely. The Glacial downpour and Super KGE. He picks up the double tap, and Lions is most certainly keeping the pressure up, man. 17-6, to six, hero kill advantage now. Yeah, that was just well played right there. It said like to freeze on a low stone because he was the one that was a damage threat over the Tempest right there. The Tempest ult ultimate was just about off anyways, and uh, he definitely chose the right target there. So uh, looks like a little bit of an issue for Stay Green real quickly. <laughs> but <so> soon. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, wow, Lions, though, they, they, are, they are on fire today. You can tell. Oh, they certainly are. And I mean, this is what we all know Lions specializes in. The kind of teams where they are just putting on nonstop aggression. They catch people out. They have an ability to just jump people. Like, you think you have wards up. You think you have your early warning system there. And then all of a sudden, Lions is on the opposite side of that early warning system with four players. And you lose two or three. And then a tower. And then those get dewarded. And then they have Congor. And then they have a token. And then they're taking more towers. And that's just what Lions does. Yeah. They don't necessarily sit there and group up and push. They don't necessarily sit there and farm forever. They like to be hyper aggressive and hyper team play. And that's exactly what they're doing here. They've done a really good job of crafting their team around this concept. And right now, I mean, unless they make some terrible decisions and some terrible plays, Stay Green really doesn't have an avenue back into this game. 
Yeah, I mean, they they do got late game. I will say that. I mean, Warby is uh, you buy him some time, and all of a sudden he will be able to take over the late game. I, I definitely could be caught, especially with the Tempest factor. I mean, this is definitely a sound team going into later game stage. But, yeah, with the lead that we are seeing already, Alliance. And I actually want to start looking at the item progression, speaking of that, uh, more than just Ravener. I mean, again, you got the Ice Brand and Ravener. Uh, you're talking about the Frozen Light possibility for him. But Grimmore, of course, is just about finished for Fousey. Question is, will he go the Shrunken Head, or will he go different? And my personal opinion is that I think he should go different. I think he should go for more maybe the sheep stick route, even something like a, uh, you know, more of an aggressive damage style, uh, the Hellflower maybe. Um, but obviously you already have a protective charm from Jerezai, and again, it's this is not really a game that screams shrunken head. Tempest, uh, a low zone to an extent. You got you got Warbeast, it's all physical. So I don't know if shrunken head is the best option here for Fuzi, but... <sighs> We'll see where it goes. I don't know. I, I kind of disagree with you there. I mean, yeah, there's not a ton of magic damage coming out, but the physical damage plus magic damage, if Wretched Hat gets caught by one stun and then another stun on top of that, she will die. She's never going to be tanky enough to tank one because if one comes, another will follow. And if she blinks into the middle of a team fight without a shrunken head or a protective charm, she will get stunned by either the stalagmites, the glacial blast, the chain reaction, the brutalizer from War Beast, which she's going to eventually have, or the rocket drill. There's enough there that she's not able to exercise her full mobility without either that shrunken head or the protective charm. Yeah. And you can't guarantee that Jarrah's is always going to have that protective charm. So yeah. maybe she could go third item, shrunken head, but I, I think that she definitely needs it. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I definitely see both ways. It's just yeah. I mean, you have the Jerizaya though. Rely on that charm and maybe get another item instead. But yeah, I, we'll, we'll see where where Fuzzy goes and you know work off of that and see how it works out. Obviously, there is the advantage if you do go shrunken head, then that charm can be used elsewhere, such as the Ravener, or even in a saving circumstance to maybe save somebody in the fight as it happens. But um, so we'll see where Fuzzy goes. Obviously, he's still in the pause here. Looks like State Green uh, sees a little bit more time. I don't know if. Uh, I would not be surprised. Again, I know they said Kyle was AFK, but I would not be surprised if he's sitting there going, let's go, let's let's play our game, let's, let's go, let's win this. You know, he's no one to do that, so it looks oh, like uh, they are good to go, though. So here we go. Right, We're zooming on, on with, uh, with game number one here. Again, it's a one nothing lead for State Green coming from the winner's bracket, but really game number one here in this best out of five, the grand finals of Cycle 4. Coming at you, got postponed to today. And here we are having a great match. As a result, hell, we get Ravener. And speaking of Ravener, leading the way at the bottom lane. They're going to push the tower. Warby's port's in. Uh, he needs to be careful, though. Dodges the ball lightning right away. <laughs> they're going to fall back, though. Not going to Yeah, Lions, they know that they're in a big advantage right now. They'll wait for the next tier of items. Um, and maybe even another token. I, I don't think they need to wait for it. Uh, they got two minutes left on this one, so they're probably going to actually push out the middle or the top or both with the remaining two minutes here and then try to sit back and play passive because there's no way that they should actually win a fight in an area like the Tempest or the Congor pit unless they get caught in a Tempest hole like in the Congor pit. Yeah. So they're comfortable just kind of sitting back right now as long as they don't wait too long, which is something Lions has done in the past and Hanskin has acknowledged when I've talked to him in interviews and whatnot that sometimes they will get so far ahead that they get scared about losing that lead. Middle lane, though, Pebble's going to have to fall back. There's players that want to kill him. Yeah, it's it's a kind of an interesting medium for Lion Esports Club because they were talking about maybe they wait too long sometimes. There's other times where they, you know, in, in games where they do have that hard carry, it seems like they want to kind of still continue to force the issue. This game, I think they need to keep that up. You know, I think it is more of a case of let's not take too long. Let's take our advantages and really take it to Stay Green. Stay Green's great at doing that. And that's why they have so many victories, especially. So, yeah, Lions definitely take a page out of Stay Green's book, if anything, and do it just back against them. So here we go, and they're doing just that. Lions Esports Club pushing the top ten. Tower. Stay Green absolutely is like, yeah, you can have it. We're going to counter push elsewhere. Portakey was just purchased by Swindomelts. So they finally have the Portakey on Pebbles, and obviously that's, a, that's a good news for them. A little bit later than they tower. wanted, but better late than never. However, here's the TP to the middle lane. Those are just illusions left behind. It should be a deny, however. And uh, good hold. And yeah, my line. So a tower for a deny. They'll take that bottom lane. That the is going to be killed. Yeah. 
Great job by SG. That's really the only option they have. Swindle is in trouble in the middle lane, though. Oh, wow. Ball Lightning get a connect, and Super KG gets credit for that kill. Now, this is going to be a conversion to a middle tower here. The push in the bottom lane is going to have to continue. Warbeast and Torture need to keep the pressure up right now because they will lose this tower in the middle lane. They need to score something, and that's going to be damage in the bottom lane. Yeah. I will say Pebbles. I'm not saying I would have saved him right there by any means, but especially being Swindle. Got to get those Mystic Vestments. Got to get those uh -huh. Mystic Vestments. So I'm sure uh, if, if the next item is not Mystic Vestments, I might be a little hard on them. Bottom tower. lane, though. We see initiation out here. They get the tower kill. They kept going. Jerezire uh, trying to take out Torture. He's going to TP away, though. Nothing he can do about that. And now slowing down Warbeast with that aura. But again, Warbeast is going to be fine. So yeah, the TP response from Alliance, they, they don't have Homecoming Stones. That's why they didn't TP mm -hmm. back. And probably why Stay Green continued to push. They probably saw that information. So. Very smart decision by State Green right there. And that's, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. They got a base tower already, despite being behind in this game. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's, that was absolutely best case scenario for SG after they lost Pebbles. They were able to pick up uh, both of the towers right there and even force the TPs back so that Lions weren't able to do any significant damage to the middle lane. But I mentioned that Frozen Light was going to be the first item here on Ravener. That is most certainly what I expected. He ends up going a portal key, which is not the most common item on Ravener. I've definitely seen it before, but it's going to be really interesting to see how Super KGE uses this. That is, yeah, that, that's that's true. Definitely, uh, again, it's not that's not mind-boggling by any means. It's it's by all means, it's kind of like that. Well, not really a devour kind of deal, but because uh, obviously devour you pull them to you, or this you're kind of porting to them, but. Um, it does get him those front lines, you know. Obviously, he really enhances off of getting those auto attacks in, using the abilities up in, up in your face. I mean, the the storm blades being able to get right next to you, it's it's more of a guarantee. Sure, ball lightning is great for getting next to people, but it's it's obviously more of a luck factor mixed with you know skill, sure, but it's not guaranteed like the portal key jump in. So oh, I can see where that's going from. I don't know though. Right, let's get it on. Be, I uh, actually okay. The reason why I do like it the most is because they clearly are making the point that they are continuing to play aggressive. If this they wanted to fall back, play a little more passive here, the frozen light into the eventual Dawnbringer definitely would make more sense. But I, I do the more I'm thinking about it now, I actually yeah. like the Porta Kipika mainly. It's top that. lane breaky Shadowstorm is going to be coming out, but no, oh. this one actually falling back. So saying, Glacius, you're too much for me, bro. I'm out of here. <laughs> Not often you see that, but yeah, clearly he got some information where he's like, if I go for this. This is probably going to be bad in the end, even if, even, even if I get a kill. So he says, no, thank you, and decides to fall back. And, and that probably was a smarter move as we saw the support. And they actually see Ravener scouting things out, but he portal key That was away. extremely dangerous from KGE right there, using the portal key rather than just walking out while invis. Yeah. He wasn't sure if there was any revelations down, but portal keyed. If Pebbles had had perfect reactions right there, he could have turned around and gotten the combo onto Ravener. Tempest could have been there in a second as well, and that could have been a kill. But in the end, Ravener does end up surviving, and Lions is just going to continue farming. And Puzzle Box just picked up from Jerezaya. That was a Puzzle huh. Box Two? Yeah, it was a two. I was going to yep. say, he was sitting on 4,500 gold, so <laughs> what the hell is he going for? And sure enough, there you are. Puzzle Box level two. Uh, you know, it uh, seems like the Kokas, uh, Flavor Kokas has come on recently. It seems every single one, when we happen to see, we've been seeing this item more and more. Everyone says, I mean, they think it's a great item in the end. So it's not it's not surprising that this is becoming more of a an item that we're almost seeing every game to an extent. But uh, you look at the factors here, obviously great for the mana, burn against heroes. Uh, like Lodestone, you know, just also great for the invis detection. Oh. Now, granted, there's none of that here on the Legion side necessarily, but... Yeah. Well, and especially for doing some de-warding, uh, Lions is clearly setting up for Congor, which is going to be up in about a minute here. And with the Bound Eye that they just used, they were able to get one ward already, but they'll be able to do another ward sweep with the Puzzle Box minions right before they actually attempt Concor, and that's going to be really good. It does become one of the more efficient ways of definitely clearing out an area right before you attempt the Concor, and that's what they're going to do. Now, Lion's Wards, on the other hand, you can see they've got an early detection system in middle and top lanes as well as the jungle, so really any route that somebody might be coming from, they're going to see him coming from a long ways away and lines might actually look to just counter initiate yeah. rather than just playing the Congor game. Well I'm actually looking at the the puzzle box pickup on Jerezaya. I will say, you know, what 
It seems like when we see Jerezai played, and for good reason, he is that. He's not necessarily a walking ultimate by any means, but he is. It seems like you want to play him more as that. I'm in the background, and I'm I'm that big ultimate. You're like a keeper or a tempest that sits and waits to use that ultimate. So I'm saying, uh, it's actually we have an engagement right here. They oh jump on a Pebbles. God. Pebbles gonna fall right there. It's a ball lightning initiation with Wretched Ag. They're continuing. Zephyr says, I am out of here. No, not gonna happen though. He's gonna be the sacrificial lamb. He falls. Wretched Ag still chasing. She is very low on mana though, so I don't see her going much further. She is gonna blink in, and yeah, not be much of a threat here though. Just put in auto attacks. Yeah, I don't think Ravenous is going to be able to catch up. But still, two players dead on state green. And here we go now. Do they have buybacks? They do on Pebbles. Torture is only about 15 seconds of resurrection anyways. They're not going to push into the base, though. Yeah, they're not really going to be able to do anything with this. Normally, you get a couple kills like that, and you're able to capitalize either a tower, Congor, Ancients, something. They might still get some single-stacked Ancient steals, but... In the end, they're Sutter for a one counter ward right there. It's just from the virtue of where the fight was on the map. But it was beautiful initiation coming in right there. Ratchet Hag with the protective charm. She She's just got all the balls in the world. The cojones are big and there <laughs> on Ratchet Hag yeah. when she's got that protective charm. As Tempest is going to be in a lot of trouble in about five seconds. Oh, boy. Whereas uh, my is actually yeah, he's going to avoid it, it looks like. So we will Ooh. be fine cleaning up the stacks. Yeah, you just see the power of that, uh, what is it called, Stormblades there from uh, from Raven or maxed out you know he's looking but okay going back to Jerusalem real quickly he does finish the level three puzzle box but I was getting at you know a portal key actually is a pretty legit pickup on him for that reason you sit way in the background to the point that they really can't jump you because of that and then when they initiate you know things start happening then you jump in with a portal key you pop up soul's blessing can put the protective charm on throw out your heels and do your thing you know barrier idol also another great pickup on him for that reason too but um, he is going more of a, you know, more of just overall utility kind of build here, assisting with the push and being a, a little more useful and active in those fights in, in that sense. But I'm not saying that it's, it's a bad pickup, and I would have rather seen the portal key, just making a point that uh, that's also another style of build you could do on yeah. him. But, uh, Absolutely. Uh, speaking of builds, by the way, the Ratchet Hag is going the cheap stick route that you wanted to see for her second yeah. item, and I have no problem with that. I think that she probably still should get the Shrunken Head as her third item here, but no problem going the cheap stick. She's been running really low on mana throughout this game. Yeah. Uh, Would have gotten quite a few extra kills if she had had some mana. Cheap stick. Gonna do that, plus more. All right, now, Lion's already lost one tower. They're gonna lose a second in the top, but trading this one... The then they're going to force a base. Yeah. Yeah. If they can get high ground before State Green ports back. Oh, you know what? I think State Green's just going to go for a full base race right now. This is going to be interesting. What will State Green ultimately do? You see Warby sitting behind, but now he's going up. It looks it's like Lions is going to be the ones to maybe react. Is it a double damage? Oh, that was torture. Excuse me to tell you. The double damage Warby's. Yeah, that's dropping the tower. And here we go. Lions is actually porting in. They're going to look to initiate. Maybe catch Warby's. There's a metamorphosis. The they do not have the best stun lockdown, so Warby's is going to be fine. He did not even use the shrunken head. Legion they do tower. get the bottom tower. They do lose their base tower, though. So really a one-for-one -one exchange in that sense. Now Ophelia is falling back. But uh, yeah, it does end up being a one for one. So I think State Green, you could argue, may have been coming on top there. As we, we talk about, you know, if you are behind, if you're ahead, yeah. you usually don't want to trade in situations like that. And that's exactly what happened. So um, yeah, really well played. Uh, I really like that decision coming out of State Green, and they force the situation on their terms. They come out a little bit ahead right there. They're still fighting a massive uphill battle. About five and a half minutes left on the token here for Wretched Hag as more items are coming out. The Shrunken Head just finished up here on Raffiner. I like that decision out of him. And then yeah. the Sheep coming out here from Wretched Hag in about another minute or so. Uh, Abyssal Skull, all the pushing items are starting to come together. They need a barrier idol at some point. Yeah. Uh, but maybe they're not so concerned about it. You mentioned that there's not a ton of magic damage. It's mostly magic lockdown here on the Legion team. Yeah. Lions, I mean, they've got that clear avenue to Rax here in the bottom lane. And as long as they make sure, oh, they're actually going to oh, go in right here. Here we go. A cheap stick just got by Retrack. Jared's having been collapsed. So can he survive? No, he cannot. The Ophelia's touch even is. He couldn't get off his ability. So. I wonder if he's spamming that R button. Now, Tempest is going to be in trouble. The Sheepstick comes out. Tempest is probably going to fall right here. So it will be a one-for-one -one exchange at least uh, coming out in favor of Lions there, or not even really in favor, but a one-for-one -one exchange. So at least they get a counter. But stay green, a big pickoff onto Jerry Jerry's Jerry bought back right away, by the way. And uh, he is already coming back. It's a so, good decision. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, they do have an element of void, but no buyback. No, he does have a buyback. Never mind. 
they're going to head straight into this bottom lane. Might actually go middle lane here. We'll see. But the biggest thing is positioning. You could not let the War Beast get onto the top side of the map right here because they know they can take the siege if they need to. The big threat is the counter push. And they know that War Beast had to be in town right there by virtue of the way that he fell back. A buyback on Jerry's Knight and his push is going to secure them some racks. There's the buyout on Tempest. He does have the element of void. Big team fight coming. Here we go. Here we go. Can they catch them? Not the best spread, honestly, from Lions. I'm a little bit worried for them. They are kind of clumped up right here. They're going to jump in, though, and they take out Tempest right off the bat with that burst. In the background, Lozo with the barbed armor. Shadow Storm, he's trying to make something happen. Not going to be enough, though. Warby still, he's tearing up players. It's just Glacius, though. The Soul's Blessing is up, and now the chase in favor of Lion Esports Club. It looks like they get through the fight. Tempest is remaining dead. They take out the melee racks. They're going straight for the bottom lane. You see the bottom push that was happening from Warby, but he had to get back. Not enough in the end, and is this going to be it? Uh, Lion Esports Club, they are going cutthroat right here. They still have the token, by the way, on Wretched Hag. Uh, still for another three minutes. So they're going to get another set of racks. I don't know if State Green can hold on much longer here in game number one. Man, that was a huge fight, but that's better initiation by Lions, though. And actually, they're not oh, they're done gonna just turn yet. They're going to actually. They're going to try to finish the game right here. Pebble's going to go down at the hands of Ravener, and yes, he will. And now Warbeast running away. No shrunken head available. He's going to get taken out by Wretched Hag. Buyback on Pebbles, but Torture gets taken down, and GGs are being called here, Breaky. Wow. Oh, what a game. What a statement game by Lion Esports Club. I mean, they came in here. They're down one nothing. It, it's, it seems like... Uh, I'm not going to lie, even myself, I mean, everyone's just at a point now where it's like, oh, stay green, oh, they're coming with the winner's advantage. They're, they could even pull off the sweep. I mean, Lions is a great team, but stay green just better. But, no, game number one, Lion Esports Club, they came out swinging, man. I mean, the Ravener, the Jerizaya, and they just took it to stay green. I loved the one. strategy. The only part that they looked at weak at in that entire game was when they get caught in the first couple of minutes yeah. and then had a bad laning situation there. But from there on, the strategy was perfect. And I think that last kill on Jerezai in the top river, I am really close to actually calling that a bait. They knew that Stay Green was almost always going to be leaning toward that top lane because that's where they had the racks exposed and that's where they were going to be able to get the counter push. They put Jerezaya, probably the most expendable player uh, in, while well, also the most juicy target, into a position where they thought that he might get initiated on, tried to get a kill knowing that if they get a kill for Stay Green back, Jerezaya can buy back and run up the lane yeah. and knowing that if they are in the base and Stay Green is also in their base, they will win that fight and they will take racks to secure a game right there. It was just brilliantly played by Lions, and they're going to even up this game, Breaky. Yeah. One and one. Yeah, you know, Oof. Lion Esports Club, or excuse me, State Green even, it's, it's, I don't, I think they played that pretty, pretty solid in the end. I think that was just, honestly, just a better game by Lion Esports Club. It's not often that happens, but yeah. uh, against State Green, especially, but Lions was just the better team that game. So it's going to be interesting to see how State Green reacts going into game number two, though. Lions showing that we aren't a one trick pony by any means. It's not just all about the Devo and the Prisoner. We can also do it with Ravener here. So, well played, a lot of fun to watch. And, ladies and gentlemen, that means you can basically call this now a clean best of the three. That's really what it is at, in, in a sense. Mm -hmm. It is now tied to 1-1. One -one. We're going into the second game here. With that said, a quick break. We'll be back. Game number two, just around the corner. Lion Esports Club versus Stay Green. This is the grand finals of 